Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another ship fitting guide for EVE Echoes. Now this time around we are looking at the Minmatar Scythe Cruiser, just because it is so completely different to anything else we've looked at in these ship fitting guides on this channel. Now if you are enjoying this content, please let me know by hitting like on the video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and you can let me know what you're enjoying and what you want to see more of, either in the comment section below or by coming and finding me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, or indeed Discord. Details on screen now and in the video description. Anyway, so this is the Minmatar Scythe. This is a logistics frigate, and by uh, log logistics cruiser, sorry. This is a logistics cruiser, and by logistics, I don't mean logistics like this on the right. This should be renamed hauling, and it should not be called logistics because it's confusing. In other MMORPGs, you occasionally play things like a white mage or a scholar or a priest um, if you want to be a healer. In EVE Online, obviously we don't have those kind of things here, we have spaceships. If you want to be a healer in EVE Echoes, you need to go into a logistics frigate or a logistics cruiser. That's what we're looking at here. This could be considered ultimately a healer ship. How do we know it's a healer ship? Well, if we come here into the uh, the fitting page and we go into the more information, we can see the usual, say it along with me kids, three high slots, three mid slots, four low slots, three power grid rigs, and three mechanical rigs. We then have a roll bonus of a special mode called Recharge, which I'll come to in a moment, followed by bonuses to Advanced Remote Shield Operation, which gives you Remote Shield Booster Efficiency, Remote Shield Booster Activation Cost Reductions, and uh, Optimal Range Increases for Remote Shield Boosters for every point that you have in that particular skill. And for every skill point you have in Advanced Cruiser Command, you also get Capacitor Transmitter Optimal Range, Remote Capacitor Transmitter Activation Cost, and Group tra uh, Capacitor Transmitter Effective Range. Of course, we can look at the other details here of the ship itself. Cargo hold capacity is fairly average. Flight velocity is not too bad. Warp speed is typical for a cruiser. Most of the stuff you see here on this scythe is fairly standard stuff. What makes it like more obvious that this is a healing ship are those bonuses. A remote shield booster efficiency and capacitor transmitter optimal range. What on earth are those devices I hear you cry? High slots are weapons, right? Well, yeah, kind of. The things you fire at other ships, I think, is a better way of putting it. And if we look here in the top slot, we have Mark V small remote shield boosters. Remote shield boosters. If we look at these here, a shield booster here, it's a shield booster that you fire at other ships, basically. Shield booster amount here is 34 per activation, duration of 4 seconds, optimal range of 4 kilometers, accuracy fall off of 6.5. If you've watched my turret videos, you should understand the basics there. That means its optimal range is at 4 kilometers, it's doing 100% effectiveness, um, at a range there of optimal plus accuracy fall off, so that's a total of 10.5, um, you're now at 50% effectiveness. Add another accuracy fall off, so 17 kilometers, and that's at 0%. That's kind of your ultimate maximum range. So why on earth would you have remote shield boosters? Why would you dedicate an entire ship to this? Well, ultimately, let's have a look. A Mark V small remote shield booster heals 34, and it's over a period of four seconds. Now, with the way shield boosters work, they work at the beginning of the activation. You activate, and it boosts the shield immediately. It applies that heal, in inverted commas, immediately. Remote armor repairers, which are the, if you look at the Amar versions of the scythe, um, that has remote armor, uh, armor repair stats. Armor repairers are different, that they do the full cycle and then they heal the armor amount at the end of the cycle. That does mean that you can sometimes waste a cycle with armor repairers, simply because as you, uh, as you repair, if the ship dies or is at full health, full armor, um, before that cycle completes, the cycle completes and then nothing happens. Whereas with the shield booster, it's kind of it hits and then it recharges ready for the next hit. So you cannot ever waste it because if it's if there's nothing for it to hit, it, it's not going to activate in the first place, if that makes sense. Also, because a shield booster uh, here, if you look, this is a Mark V small remote shield booster. It heals at 34 over a duration of four seconds. Now, if I go down here to here and I look for, into my low slots and I look for a Mark Mark V uh, shield booster, small shield booster, I must have one of these, um, I should have thought this through ahead of time, there's Mark V civilian, Mark 1s, Mark 3s, lots of these, Mark V small shield extender, no that's not what I need either, ah, this is going great, there we are, Mark V small shield booster, I knew I had one. You see, this is 34 um, over a period of two seconds with the shield booster, but that is with my skills in uh, increasing that as well. 
What I'm trying to get at here is that the remote shield boosters are actually more effective per cycle, per bit of capacitor, um, than installed shield boosters are. With the correct uh, skills in either, you will uh, ultimately be healing more of your friendly ships with a remote shield booster than they would be repairing themselves with a standard fitted shield booster. That means that your ships and your fleet can actually worry only about fitting maybe one or two defensive devices, maybe even none at all if you've got enough on your ship. You can keep healing them, they don't have to worry about healing themselves, they can focus on dealing more damage or doing whatever it is they're supposed to be doing. The same applies here for our mid slots. Now the mid slots here are Mark III small remote ca uh, capacitor transmitters. Now these do exactly what they say on the tin. Rather than uh, normally like a an NG Nosferatu takes sh energy from your opponent's ship and it drains it into yours. Here, what a remote capacitor transmitter does is the exact opposite. It takes a capacitor from your ship and puts it into theirs. That in itself is incredibly useful because again, it gives your uh, your friendly ships that boost when they need it. Someone in your fleet is taking some heavy damage and they're trying to activate a shield extender, but they don't have enough capacity to do so. You can whack them with this and recharge it. Or maybe they're not stable capacitor and as they're healing and tanking, uh, their capacitor's coming down. Again, you can recharge it. Basically, what I'm trying to get out here is that the Minmatar Scythe, with these kind of fittings, is going around and healing up other ships in the fleet. You are repairing their shields, you are refilling their uh, capacitor whilst they're moving. As such, what kind of low slots do I recommend? Well, an afterburner is pretty much a must because it allows you to move quickly amongst the ships nearby, get, to what, uh, get up close to whatever it is that you're trying to heal and heal it. A shield booster of your own, again, is fairly useful. I've opted instead for a shield extender, just so I can tank a bit more of the damage. Um, ultimately, I should be behind most of the other ships at a bit of a range anyway. Um, hopefully, I'm not as lucrative a target and other ships are peeling off for me. And finally here, I have equipped a small capacitor battery, just in case things don't quite go my way and I need to heal a bit too much. Um, and I need to be like restoring capacitor as well, and that's actually draining me too fast. I can whack that on quickly as well. Now that does mean of course I have a ship that is doing zero DPS, but it does allow everyone else in my fleet to be doing considerably more. That's the kind of draw to this. Now of course as well you've also seen that the ship does have a recharge mode. So what I'm going to do now is undock from Masma, move out into space and just explain what that means too. Now unfortunately I don't have anyone that I can demonstrate all of this on, I don't have anyone that I can um, immediately just grab and kind of lock onto and show the healing effects, but you can see here how this is all laid out. Now these, I don't think they can be stacked, no they can't be stacked, so you are left with a fairly complex thing here, but of course you just lock on to whoever it is you want to lock on to, um, and then you can kind of do your thing healing or tr uh, transmitting capacitor. It's worth me just rearranging those quickly so that those are in the right place. Now, when I said the recharge mode, that's this button here in the bottom right, and if I tap that, you'll see capacitor recharge time goes down, but my flight velocity um, does go down as well. That means when I'm out here doing this, I'm going to be moving slower, but it does mean that um, my capacitor is going to be recharging faster, so while I'm healing the uh, fleet around me, I should be able to keep my capacitor nice and stable. It's going to be recharging, allowing me to just keep that healing going over time. And that ultimately really is everything that you need to know about the ship itself. But what about skills? Well, of course, if we go into skills, you've seen that the ship itself recommends a couple of them. Those are things like under cruising technology, of course. You want uh, cruiser command and advanced cruiser command is the one that it asked for there. Under shield operation, you'll see that there is remote shield operation as a skill. And if you look at that there, it reduces the activation cost of a remote shield booster. It ups the optimal range, increases the shield bonus and reduces the amount of power grid. That is a very powerful skill. And if this is the kind of thing you want to be doing, 100% you need that skill at, at least level five. Then you start moving into the advanced remote shield operation for more of the same. Extra bonuses are always good. Now, if you're running with a Mar ships, of course, you're going to want things like the advanced armor repairers, um, remote armor repairers, sorry, and the same thing goes here, remote armor repairer operation, there you have it, reduces the activation cost and power grid need, increases the optimal range and efficiency. Now, when I say, like, the Amar versions and that, what I'm essentially getting at is, let's hear it, we'll go into the ship tree. If we look into the ship tree and come out, look at Amar, and go up to their cruisers, You'll see that, I've got to remember which one of these it is off the top of my head. No, that's an omen. 
That's a Marla. There we are. That's the Arbitrator, meaning it is the last one for me to tap on. Of course it is, the Augura. There it is, Special Mode Recharge, and you'll see it's basically the same skill brackets as before. Capacitor Transmitter Optimal Range is all there as well, but Remote Armor Repairer Activation Cost, Remote Armor Repairer Duration, and re uh, Repairer Optimal Range are there instead of Shield Booster. Now, of course, that's just the Augura. The Augura is the Amar version. There are Kaldari and Galente versions. Let's look at those very quickly. Now I've just got to do the little dig around. It should be this one here, the Osprey. There we go, remote shield booster duration. So the Osprey, again, for Kaldari is a shield boosting ship. And then finally, for Galente, we'll move across again. And it should be our friend here. No, that's the Vexa Sniper. That's not the one we're looking for. Where are you hiding? Thorax 2, Thorax Guardian, Execura. There we are, that's a horrid thing to try and say. Again, the Execura uses uh, remote armor repairers instead of the shield boosters. So if you're looking for shield boosters, you want the Kaldari Osprey or the Minmatar Scythe for... Um, for remote armor repairers, it's either the ex uh, the Execura or the Augura, uh, Galente and Amar accordingly. And those will give you what you're looking for, that kind of healing power that you would want for your fleet. Now, of course, this does get covered briefly in my fleet video, but I did just want to kind of showcase it off actually on a particular ship and what it can look like. I do actually quite like how the scythe looks in its rugged kind of, it's built from scrap kind of typical Minmatar way, the little windows on the side there, and of course you can see the, uh, the bridge at the front there. I, I just, I like how this ship looks, and I've had a lot of fun um, in the past, not with the cruisers in fairness, but with things like the Burst Frigates. Um, in EVE Online, where I have used those. Anyway, I think that does just about cover everything that I wanted to mention about this particular ship. We've looked at skills, we've looked at fittings, we've looked at the bonuses and that for it, and what it actually does. So if you're looking to play a healer class in EVE Online, these are the kind of ships that you need. Look at your uh, frigates for a similar kind of things, like as I said, the burst uh, for Minmatar. Then consider moving up to the sides. Your fleet will love you for it, and any corporation that you're part of, if they're getting involved in corporate warfare and thus taking fleets out into space, you are going to be a very popular pilot, and you can often command a fairly high wage for that kind of thing um, as a mercenary as well, just to go out with someone and keep them alive. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching, folks. I do hope you found this useful. As of course, let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.